Hello, I'm Dr. Karen for Embrace Life Ohm and Mother Corps, and in our continuing series on light and your health, I'm going to be talking today about the hidden health hazards of energy efficient lighting. Now, to understand these hazards, we need to talk about something called ROS, or reactive oxygen species. And this is a chemical species in which the oxygen molecule or molecules do not have all the electrons that they want. So they very actively attack other molecules trying to get these missing electrons. Now ROS are constantly produced in our body as a natural byproduct of using food and air for energy. And our body is also constantly using these species for our health. For example, the immune system uses a lot of ROS to kill pathogens and the body uses ROS for cell-to-cell -cell messaging, to maintain homeostasis, and for other essential functions. But at the same time, the body produces a lot of antioxidants to neutralize ROS, and it has a complex repair system to take care of ROS damage. Because if the ROS get out of control, they put us in a state of what is known as oxidative stress. And in oxidative stress, the ROS are attacking members of our own body. For example, if the ROS attack our DNA, it can lead to DNA mutations, eventually leading to cancer. If it attacks our neurons, it can lead to diseases such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. And if it attacks our neurotransmitters or our neurotransmitter receivers, that can contribute to ADHD, autism, and depression. In fact, there's probably over a hundred different diseases in which oxidative stress can play a very important role. So, of course, we want to reduce oxidative stress in our body. There are a number of environmental and lifestyle factors that can increase or decrease your oxidative stress. For example, eating junk food will increase your oxidative stress, while eating fruits and vegetables will decrease your oxidative stress. Being exposed to bright electric light at night will increase your oxidative stress because it will decrease your production of melatonin, which is a powerful antioxidant, while using firelight at night will decrease your oxidative stress. But in addition to the timing of light exposure, the color of light exposure matters. Being exposed to blue light at any time of day will increase your oxidative stress, while being exposed to near-infrared and infrared light will decrease your oxidative stress. Now the reasons for this effect are a little bit complicated and we'll go into it in future shows. But the important thing to know here is that the traditional incandescent light contains both blue and infrared. In fact, 90% of the output from these bulbs was in the infrared realm or heat. They made light bulbs more energy efficient by eliminating this infrared. So your fluorescent bulb still produces the visible blue light, but it produces a lot less of the infrared. And your LED bulb produces even more blue light with a negligible infrared output. So when you're spending your time under fluorescent and LED lights, you're getting a bunch of oxidative stress from the blue without the balancing antioxidative stress from the red. And the computer, flat screen TVs, and cell phones that we spend so much time looking at are based on LED technology. So all these screens have tons of oxidative blue light without having the decreased oxidative effects of the infrared. Now, as we've constantly increased our unbalanced blue light exposure over the years, we've seen a corresponding increase in oxidative stress diseases, such as Alzheimer's, autism, macular degeneration, and depression. And when smartphones became popular, we saw a jump in depression and suicide, and we also saw an increase in teens going to the hospital with psychiatric disorders. In addition, studies have shown that there is a correlation between how much time teens spend in front of a screen and how likely they are to be depressed. Now, blue light is unlikely to be the only factor here. Obviously, there's other kinds of radiation coming out of the phones, and there's other issues with screen use. But the science indicates that the unbalanced blue light exposure is an important factor in this increase in oxidative stress. So what can you do to reduce oxidative stress in your body from artificial light exposure? And one of the best things you can do is get out in the sun because the sun provides an excellent balance of blue and infrared light. And I want to emphasize here that blue light is not bad for your body. If you get it in the right balance and in the right times, it's excellent for your health. And the sun will give it to you at the right time and in the right balance, in particular if you make sure to get out in the morning, the noon, and in the evening. 
because there's more infrared in the morning and the evening and more blue light during the middle of the day. And studies have shown that if you get out in the morning and you get that extra infrared into your skin, that will actually help prevent you get sun damage when the blue light is stronger at noon. You also want to bring solar light into your indoor environment by opening the curtains and using a skylight or a solar tube. And at nighttime, the optimal choice is olive oil lamp lighting. And you can watch our accompanying video on how to make your own olive oil lamp. If you need more light at night, you can watch our accompanying video on the best light bulb choices to make for nighttime use. But if you're stuck in an environment where you're going to be exposed to bright, energy efficient lighting, then you want to take steps to shield yourself by using shielding glasses and clothing, and you want to add extra infrared to your life. For example, you could bring a salt lamp or an olive oil lamp into your work environment, and you could do infrared therapy when you're at home. Now, infrared therapy has shown its ability to reverse earlier damage from blue light exposure. For example, infrared therapy can improve your vision if you have macular degeneration, it may improve your memory if you have Alzheimer's disease, and it has been shown to clear up cases of depression and anxiety. Now, there's a lot of different infrared therapies on the market, and so please subscribe to our channel. In future shows, we'll be reviewing the different options. And I also want to make a little point here that too much infrared will put you back into oxidative stress. So if you're using infrared therapy, please know what you're doing. Thanks so much for watching our show.